It's that time of year again where we get a new release of Ubuntu. This time around, it's named Kinetic Kudu, also known as Ubuntu 22.10. Let's talk about some of the new features and is it worth making the upgrade to the Iterum release instead of staying at the long-term support edition 22.04? Well, let's check things out. So let's talk about probably the biggest difference here in Ubuntu 22.10 and that is GNOME edition 43. That's right, we get an updated version of GNOME. And one thing you'll notice in the top right corner, if you click on the quick settings bar, you'll notice a change and overhaul since GNOME 42, because here in GNOME 43, we've gotten these pill looking kind of things, much more like a Mac OS design. You have dark mode selection on whether you want to turn that on and off, night light to help the strain on your eyes a little bit, balanced so you can switch between what type of power settings you want. You have your wired or wireless connection audio which i want to talk about in a bit there is some quite exciting news that might actually push you to go into ubuntu 22.10 just from the audio side of things but you got your settings here access and if you want to take a quick screenshot you can from the quick settings menu now fantastic stuff of course you can lock the screen or shut down power down things restart or what have you now that's just the feature of GNOME 43. And of course we get a full suite of things upgraded with GNOME 43, including their apps. And one big one is Nautilus. Of course, Nautilus, the file manager has received a huge update with GNOME 43. It's looking pretty great in my opinion. Now there's features, what I like to call mobile friendly. If you kind of scroll back and forth here and you resize the file manager, what you'll notice is a cascading effect where you lose your menu bar on the left hand side it's still available from the top over here it kind of slides in from the left but again kind of that mobile friendly or just a compact way of viewing nautilus and saving some space of course there are many other updates to gnome 43 and their apps versus what they had in the long-term support ubuntu 2204 edition which was a mix of gnome apps including versions 42 and 41 in the lts edition this was a complete mess, at least in my opinion. It might be one of the only reasons you decide to actually switch over to Ubuntu 22.10. Either way, with that being said, smash that like button. Let's look at this more cohesive experience with GNOME 43 throughout. With this new design, you'll also get a nice view of your apps. So let's just open up a few new windows here. That way we have a little bit of a difference between them anyways. And now if I hit activities and I have my workspace view, including the various different workspaces that I can start. If I wanted to start a new desktop workspace, I could, but I don't want to. Instead, you see this render of all the apps that are currently open on your desktop. And it's a better previewing system, at least in my opinion, because you can see what exactly is going on in each of the renders. You select whichever one you want, and that's the one that loads right up, which is fantastic. It just gets you where you want to be quicker. Even if you have the same app opened up, you get to see a render of that app as it actually stands in the moment. So GTK4 theming has been improved and boosts better performance as well as consistency. Since we had a mess of apps in 2204, let's check out the kernel version real quick. We can do this by starting up a terminal. And if we do uname A, that should give us all the information about this system here. And we're looking at kernel version 5.19, which features things like multi-threaded decompression on Ubuntu, to improve multi-core desktop and snap performance. All right, a big one, at least for me, that I promised we'd get to is instead of Pulse Audio being the default here in Ubuntu 22.10, they have finally made the switch over to Pipewire instead. Now this is the default and they've gotten rid of this. Why use Pipewire as a default audio provider here in Ubuntu? Well, first off, many other distributions have already made this switch and the reason being is a lot of people have said that there's broadened support for audio devices. So basically more audio device support. That's number one. And number two being in general, better Bluetooth capability, which are both exciting things to see. If you are a fan of Pipewire, you may want to take a look at 2210 and make that upgrade and switch. Now, what's the kind of drawback from going to 2210? Well, it only has nine months of support before you actually have to make another upgrade until you get back to a LTS or long-term support edition, which 
at this moment is about a year and a half away. It's quite some time. So unless you really need some of these tools and you really want the upgrade, it may or may not make sense. You'll have to figure that out yourself. A few other things I wanna mention is there is more, more codec support. So by default, the image viewer could not support WebP images. Now the default image viewer does support WebP images. So instead of having to use some browser or some other goofy tool in order to get your image loaded, you can do it in the default image viewer that comes with Ubuntu. And then for you gamers out there, let's talk Ubuntu Software Center and Snap Images in particular. So now the Steam Snap that's offered in the Ubuntu Software Center will include the latest Mesa graphics driver support. That way you don't actually have to update those drivers on your own. Instead, it's gonna be built right into the Snap and they're going to try and keep that version up to the latest and greatest, which is great for gamers, especially those of you using Mesa. Anyways, other tool chains have gotten upgraded in 2210, including the Ruby repo, the Go, GCC, and Rust. So if you're trying to stay on the latest and greatest with those, it might warrant an upgrade as well. Overall, quite a few updates, a more cohesive experience. And personally, enough things got upgraded for me to go and just make the switch from 2204 to 2210. Of course, I'm gonna keep both versions on my personal computer. One last thing I wanna get into is the resource usage. I like checking that out in terminal with HTOP. So here, let's do HTOP and we can see that the current memory usage here is around one gig. This is actually down a little bit from GNOME version 42. I remember I was getting up to like 1.2 gigs and that was with running for a little bit. I've been running for about 20 minutes now. Not a big deal. Our CPU is not going up or down really much, anywhere between zero and 2%. I got four cores here. The swap space is not being used at all. I have 109 tasks, 265 threads, 94 kernel threads. And again, I've been up for about 21 minutes. So overall, somewhere in the mid tier memory usage here for our desktop environment, GNOME 43. While we're at it, let's check out the system information with NeoFetch. So this is Ubuntu 22.04, again, using that 5.19 kernel. There are 1,683 base packages installed with nine snaps. It's using Bash version 5.2, GNOME 43, the Window Manager, Mutter, and the theme, Iowata. And this is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series processor. And currently we're using around 1.1 gigs out of eight gigs of memory. Well, that's about it. Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to make the update to Ubuntu 22.10, Kinetic Kudu. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.